We mean you no harm. We're from the government and we're here to help. Just kidding. All right. Hey, how's everybody doing? This is Tommy Jordan. It is 5.30 on Friday, March 27th. Um, North Carolina just finished. Well, if you were paying atten attention to it, we just had a press release from the governor's office covering executive order number 121, which is going to take effect Monday at 5 o'clock, although you're strongly encouraged to start paying attention to this executive order now and following its practices. This is a complicated executive order, and I have been fielding questions both personally on Facebook, on social media, on at, at the county offices, and so the departments. So I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can in this one video. Okay? So for the people who were called, who have called the board of commissioners' office mad because they don't like my video and said this guy's pretend to be the commissioners. No, I'm not. I am a commissioner. I'm one of seven. I'm coming to you in my capacity as commissioner to tell you some information. I'm not acting as the board because if you knew anything about the board, you'd understand that one person can't do anything as the board. So I'm not coming to you as a represent and claiming to represent what the board thinks. I'm representing what Tommy Jordan thinks because that's who I am. And I don't speak for nobody else and nobody speaks for me. Are we clear? Glad we got that out of the way. Okay, now, if those hotheads are finished, we have a 10-page executive order that we need to get through. So let's make it fun, let's make it fast, and let's skip the BS. Okay, number uh, page number one, whereas this, whereas that, which pretty much explains why we're doing this thing. Okay, so we have an executive order, or, or, order called a stay-at-home policy. What does it mean? It means you should stay at home. Clear? Clear. Um, it, it, is, um, it begins at 5 p.m. Monday afternoon. Um, it, there's all... Also a stipulation, in, well, you know what? I'll just go through it beginning to end. That makes more sense. Okay, so what can you leave home for? I'll just jump to that. To perform work at businesses authorized to remain open under section two, which is defined below as, and it's healthcare, public health, blah, 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 essential governmental operations, essential infrastructure operations, or to otherwise carry out activities specifically per permitted in this order, including minimum basic uh, operations. You can all, all also leave home to take care of others. I swear, it says it, take care of others right there. So this includes attending weddings, funerals, provided the individuals comply with social distancing requirements and mass gatherings as set forth below. And there's a change to mass gatherings, so pay attention. Okay, you can leave home to care for a family member or assist a friend or a pet in another household, transport family members, friends, or, or, or pets. You can go to places of worship. It says travel to and from places of worship. You can leave to receive goods and services. That means you can leave to receive goods so you can go get something from the store. Or you can go receive a service, such as something from a company that provides a service, like an oil change, for example. That would be a service. Um, let me mute my computer so it quits digging in my ear. Um, you can leave to return to your place of residences or between one's place of residence for, uh, for other purposes, such as child custody, visitation arrangements, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can leave home to volunteer to volunteer with organizations that provide charitable and social services. So you can do a lot of stuff, okay? They're not saying you have to stay in your house. They're saying you can't go out in public and just be in the public spaces congregating. This is not to keep you locked behind your doors. It's to keep you from massing about in public, okay? Be clear. No one is, is, is arguing for a you can't leave your house policy. Let me be clear. In the United States, they don't have that authority. They can't do that. They're never going to do that. It's never going to happen. They couldn't enforce it if they wanted to. So stop, for the love of God, spreading that bullshit on Facebook. Because I am so tired of debunking your stupid ass myths. Okay? Quit it. Neil, whatever your face is, you know who you are. Um, so they're not, they're not going to lock you, you in a house. For those of you that are worried about that, stop. I don't know how else to say it to you. Um, so... Uh, what is an essential business? Let's cover that. In light of the above considerations, non-essential business and operations must cease. Uh, sounds bad. Non-essential businesses must cease. All right, well, all businesses and operations in the state except COVID-19 essential business and operations, as defined below, are required to cease all activities within the state except minimum basic operations as defined below. Well, so you got to shut down your business except for the minimum basic operations. What does that mean? It tells you later on. Um... All COVID-19 essential business and operations are directed to the maximum extent possible to allow employees to work from home or telework. Um, so, uh, let me see, next section, nope, did that one, next page. Um, 
obviously it includes healthcare and public health, health operations, and it's literally three paragraphs of healthcare related business that I'm gonna skip. Human services operations, such as long-term care facilities, child care centers, family and child care, uh, care ch family and child care homes, shelters for seniors, adults, children, people with developmental disabilities. I go on for days. If it's a service to people, it's essential, all right? Essential infrastructure operations includes, but is not limited to, pay attention, food and beverage production, distribution, fulfillment centers, storage facilities, construction, etc. So food and beverage centers. If you work in food, you're good to go. Um, let me see, essential government operations, uh, let me skip down here. For the purpose of this order, all first responders, if you're a first responder or you work for government, you're exempt. I'll just skip that, okay? Um, it specifically says, uh, blah, 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 are categorically exempt from this executive order. So if you work in shelters, ha hazmat, first responders, child protection, child w welfare, police, EMT, EMS, fire department, whatever, you're exempt. If stores that sell goods and medicine, that also means employees that work at the stores that sell good and medicine, goods and medicine. So if you work at CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Food Lion, the local gas station, the fast stop, the quick stop, the slow stop, the quick check, which is not quick, but whatever. If you work there and you sell stuff to the people, you can stay open. You can go to work. And as people, you can go to those places, all right? It says so. Grocery stores, pharmacies, certified farmers markets, farm and produce stands, supermarkets, convenience stores, and other establishments engaged in the retail trade of groceries, canned food, dry goods, frozen food, fresh foods, vegetables, pet supplies, fresh meat, fresh, uh, fresh fish, poultry, prepared food, alcohol, non-alcoholic beverages. Oh, my God. So the ABC stores are open. The beer stores are open. They're all open. Okay? You can go if you need to. Stop worrying. Um, food. Food and beverage production and agriculture, including food production, processing, cultivation, farming, livestock, fishing, forestry, baking, and other agriculture, including cultivation, marketing, production, distribution, blah, 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 including animal shelters, rescue shelters, kennels, and adoption facilities. The dog, the, 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 the animal rescues are open or can be open. Can they shut themselves down? They absolutely can, but the governor's not. He's literally exempted about every darn thing he can possibly exempt. Organizations that provide charitable and social services. If you provide a charitable service, and if you're a provider of social service, you can open just, and you can go to those places. So don't ask stupid questions. If any of those things were covered, you can go to them. And I can't think for the life of me what's not covered that, has, that wasn't already shut down in Executive Order 120, like hair salons, the movie theaters, that kind of stuff. Um, financial institutions, banks, currency exchangers, lenders, pawnbrokers. So pawn shops are open. Um, home improvement, hardware and supply stores, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Home Depot, not going to shut down. Critical trades, building and construction tradesmen, tradeswomen, including plumbers, electricians, exterminators, cleaning staff, janitorial staff for commercial and government property, security staff, engineers, HVAC, painting, cleaning, um, furniture movers, landscaping. You're, you're, you're good. Those people can all work and go to work. Mail, post, shipping, logistics, delivery, and pickup, educational you know, institutions. Um, do, 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 for, for, for the purposes of facilitating remote learning. So schools, the people that need to go there to keep the remote le learning stuff open and functioning can go to work. Laundry services, laundromats, dry cleaners, industrial cleaners, restaurants for consumption off premises. I like how we clarified that this time. Um, the, the restaurants and other facilities that prepare and serve food but only for consumption off premises those, through such means as in-house delivery, third-party delivery, drive-thru, curbside pickup, and carry-out, blah, 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 blah. Supplies to work from home. So if you sell supplies to work from home, like headsets, books, paper, computer supplies, or if you need to buy them, you can go out. Supplies for COVID-19 essential businesses. That should be pretty much self-explanatory. Home-based care and services for senior citizens, children, adults, and or people with um, developmental disabilities, intellectual disabilities, substance abuse, and or mental illness, nannies, daycares, I mean, I don't know how else to say it, people, uh, shelters, professional services such as legal, accounting, insurance, professional engineering, architects, land surveying, real estate, including brokerage, appraisal, and title services, tax preparation. Yes, accountants do not get to get, you know, off work. You're still essential. Uh, manufactured distribution and supply chain for critical products, hotels and motels, remind me to come back to that, funeral services, additional Essential retail businesses, such as electronic retailers that sell cell phones, computers, tablets, lawn and garden equipment retailers, bookstores that sell educational material, beer, wine, and liquor stores, retail functions of gas stations, convenience stores, uh, pet and feed stores. Uh, do y'all get the point? I've been talking for 10 minutes, and I've covered most of 10 pages and, and said everything can pretty much be open. Let's be clear. The governor can't say that. 
County management's not going to say that. If you call a county department or a city department anywhere in this state and ask the question, can we do something? They're not going to give you the blunt answer that I'm giving you right now. If he's not already shut it down, this shut it down. And you notice this pretty much leaves everything open. North Carolina, nor can any other state legally have the jurisdiction to tell you you can't leave your home, okay? That's not happening. It's not going to happen. It won't happen. And if it did happen, well, pick up your gun and go to war because at that point we've just shredded the Constitution and nobody's doing that. Nobody's trying to do that, all right? Hotels and motels. Here's a quick thing that I know from my meetings with both EMS, police chiefs, fire chiefs, and hospital staff that you might want to think about. So if you work at a, at a hotel or worked at a hotel, well, God knows if you run one on, on one or know somebody that does, take this to them to let them put it in their pipe and smoke it, all right? We have a lot of first responders, nurses, uh, police, fire, EMS, EMTs, uh, even some county people, shelter workers, all kinds of people, hundreds of people that are working the front lines of this thing. And by the way, have no freaking PPE, which pisses me off to no extent, but that's an argument for a whole nother day. Or maybe a little blare this video. Time will tell. Those people have nowhere to go. They're working with infected patients across the state, and they know they are, and they're going to continue to do that. And they need... So if you run a hotel, here's my idea, because you ain't making no damn money right now. I mean, let's be honest. You ought to be glad for anything. If somebody says, I give you $30 but a day, you should take it. So how about call, how about talk to your bosses, talk to your, your, your people, and get a plan together with hospitals, police departments, first responders, fire and EMS. Work within your community because they'll appreciate it. I know they'll appreciate it because they told me they appreciate it because I brought this up at three different meetings and everybody's going, ooh, great idea. Because if you have a hotel, especially one that has exterior doors, and these first responders can go there and sleep and not take this home to their family where well, they know they've been exposed to it, but they don't have enough PPE, then they can go back and forth to work and feel safe like they're keeping their family protected at home. But I want to ask some police officer to go out and and get hands-on with a, 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 a potentially infected patient when he's got no gloves, no mask, and he's got a wife and four kids at home. Guess who's not going to that call? Know what I'm saying? Okay, so uh, funeral services, funeral, mortuary, cremation, burial, and cemetery, you know. Um, all right, so everybody can go to work. Are, you, are we clear? I mean, there's 10 pages of who can go to work and who, who can't. And everybody can, unless you work in a nail salon, hair salon, uh, massage parlor, we ain't got none of the cool ones, no how. Movie theater, that kind of stuff. Um, so, where are we at here? Um, to that end, wait, hold on, am I on section five or section four? Let me jump back to section four. Woo! I, I'm, I'm getting off track. Um, businesses that, uh, any business is allowed to perform minimum basic operations, and that includes the minimum activities necessary to maintain the value of the business's inventory, preserve the condition of the business's physical plant and, 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 and equipment, ensure security, process payroll and employee benefits or related function, and it's the minimum necessary uh, activities to facilitate employees being able to work from home. In other words, you don't have to shut your building, lock the doors, throw away the key, and never come back. You need to go back and check on your business, rotate your stock, do things, do it. No one's saying you can't. In, in fact, they're specifically saying you can on like page nine mass gatherings here's one of the changes section 1a of executive orders 117 and 120 is being replaced you can go back and read those i'm not going to bother i know what they say because I, I i read them a mass gathering is any event that brings together more than 10 persons in a single room or space at the same time such as auditorium stadium arena large conference room meeting hall or any other confined indoor or outdoor space that includes parades fairs and festivals the old rule was 50 people it's now five i'm sorry 10. no more than 10 people congregating in one spot period end of story i don't care what your business is that should not happen or you were in violation are we clear that i mean and that will probably get you a ticket and it should um a mass gathering does not include normal operations at, a at airports, bus and train stations, uh, the medical facilities, libraries, shopping malls, and centers. It also does not include any essential business as, as defined in this order. Notwithstanding the above, no more than 50 p per, uh, per persons to together that are observing social distancing where practical and blah, blah, blah. Nothing herein is, oh yeah, this is important. Nothing, and he mentions this in, in his briefing. 
Nothing herein is intended to limit or prohibit counties and cities in North Carolina from enacting ordinances and issuing state of emergency declarations which impose greater restrictions than found here. So to be clear, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, Podunk, North Carolina, has a rule that says you cannot have more than five people together at one time. Well, Cooper just had a rule that says you can have no more than ten people together at one time. Does the, fi does the stronger rule of the county or city overrule this? Yes. He said so. It's written down. So if there's a stronger rule written somewhere in your city or county or locale that is more rigid or more restrictive than the rules that were just in this order, those rules apply. They do not invalidate each other. So if part of this rule says five feet and our rule says ten feet, that five foot part is more, I mean, overrides the ten foot rule. It doesn't mean the rest of either document is thrown out. It just means that, you know, where your local rules are stronger, they override this rule. If you have local rules that are weaker, this rule overrides those for any gaps that it fills in. For example, if you have a local rule that says uh, curfew at 11 p.m. for people 16 years and younger, and no more than 20 people gathering at one time, because that's a county rule that your county has. Now, this new rule says it doesn't have anything to do with the, the, the curfew, but it does say no more than 10 people together at a time. So it, that this rule would supersede your county rule. All right, now, the FAQ, because they knew you had questions. I had questions. I sent a question to the, the governor's office. Thank you, Kevin, for getting it to him. Thank you, Governor Cooper, for getting it all on the air and covering it. So FAQs for a stay-at-home order. This order permits the following businesses to remain open. Restaurants that provide takeout and uh, drive through delivery, grocery stores, ABC stores, beer and wine stores, doctors, health care providers, pharmacies, hardware stores, post offices, office supply, gas stations, convenience stores, veterinarians, pet supply, hotel, airlines, buses, taxis, ride share, places of worship, churches, child care providers, and for a full list of businesses, please see the order that, that I just threw in the floor. So does that mean if I didn't say it, it's not covered? Well, I can't think of a single dang thing yet that if you ask, wasn't covered by one of those things. But if you still need to know, please, by all means, ask me in the comments on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash elect Tommy Jordan, and, and find this video and comment there. I will find the answer to it and get back to you, all right? Is the governor going to release a list of businesses, business types that, that, that cannot be, I mean, that are going to be shut down further? No, he's not. This is as precise as he's going to get, all right? Um... So, what does stay at home mean? It means people should stay at home. I don't know how, how to be clear. How long, uh, what does it take to effect? Monday, March 35 p.m. When will it be lifted? Currently, it's valid for one month. So, figure April 30th, but it could be rescinded or it could run longer. Um, it, is it mandatory or is it guidance? This is mandatory. This is a law. This is not an option. This is a law. Um, how will it be enforced? Governor Cooper is seeking voluntary cooperation from all state residents and businesses to, to ensure the health and safety of our communities. If voluntary cooperation is not achieved, state and local law enforcement officers have the authority to enforce the order. What does all this read as? This reads as, please, stay the hell home and don't go out in public. It doesn't mean don't sit out backyard and have a, don't sit out in your backyard and have a barbecue. It doesn't mean lock yourself up in the house, put on your, 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 your freak out mask, and wait for the world to end. It's not happening, okay? We're just trying to stop people. Social distancing works, and people aren't listening, so they're making stronger rules. Um, can I leave my home to visit family or friends? Again, he can't say no. He's not allowed to. So he said individuals may leave their home to care for a family member or friend or to help family members or friends get essential goods or receive health care. Individuals should not visit with family or friends if there's no urgent need. Did he say can't? No. Why? Because he can't. He's not allowed to tell you you can't go to your friend's house. Should you be the stupid-ass parent that lets your son go over and hang out with another kid this weekend, all weekend long, just because for fun? No, you moron. If your kid's been hanging out with that kid the entire time any, any, anyway and they're in your social circle and you've already got germs back and forth, great, you might as well let them play together. But don't bring some other kid over that's not been around any, any of these kids for the last three weeks and expose them to your crap or expose you to their crap. All right? Don't do that. That's just dumb. If you got... Treat it like cooties. A five-year-old knows how cooties work. If you got the same cooties, it's okay. You can play together. But if you got different cooties, don't be bringing your cooties up in my cooties. They don't need to be here. Cooties don't get along. It's like tequila and every other drink at the bar. They don't get along well for long. So stay within your social circles. 
don't go out, out there dragging new folks in, especially schools. What if I require medical attention? If you got to go to the doctor, go to the damn doctor. Um, can I leave my home? Now, all these stupid, all these answers are answered the same way. The governor says you shouldn't do that, but he can't say no. Can I leave, leave my home to exercise? Yeah. Uh, does this or, or, order prohibit groups, uh, you know, outside group exercises? What kind of stupid question is that? I, I can't believe adults write this stuff. As long as the group abides by the mass gathering provision of no more than 10 people and maintains adequate social distancing, it's not prohibited, but it's strongly discouraged. What if my home is not safe? It says go somewhere else and find a safe location. Can I take my kids to the park? Unless your local jurisdiction has closed parks, people may go to the park and open outdoor areas while following social distancing and mass gathering guidelines. Public playgrounds and equipment are closed for you statewide because nobody can like Clorox wipe the kids' swing sets fast enough for kids to, you know, that's just dumb. Are the entertainment, personal care, and grooming businesses that are closed under Executive Order 120 are supposed to remain closed? Anything closed under Executive Order 120 stays closed. What businesses may remain open? Oh my God, are you people stupid? It's the same things that we just told you, basically everything else. Does my business need any documentation to continue operating? No. Businesses and not-for-profits that are deemed essential as, as defined by blah, 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 blah. Employees are not required to have specific documentation to, to, to report to work under this order. What if my business is not listed as essential and I cannot conduct business operations and maintain social distancing between employees? What if I just can't do anything that you sensible people are saying? If it's not included in the list of businesses and you believe it's essential, you can submit an application to the North Carolina Department of, of, of Revenue that would review it and determine whether it's necessary, uh, I mean, whether the business is necessary to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and it will post on its website. So simply just don't ask, it's a stupid question. Um, what if I'm required to close? Close. Is my business, pre uh, God, these are dumb. Um, are religious functions allowed? Religious gatherings are subject to the mass gathering ban and may not have more than 10 people. Participants should practice social distancing. Are weddings allowed? They may not have more than 10 people. Participants should practice social distancing. Are funerals allowed? That is the one time where they said you can have up to 50 people, but they should, persist, should practice social distancing. Can I attend religious services? Oh my God! You need to follow social distancing and no more than 10 people should be assembled. Um, yeah, the order allows individuals to attend their places of worship if they follow the mass gathering ban and do not have more than 10 people. So, you know, um, places of worship are encouraged to stream their services online. Are car dealerships open? Yes. Can I still mail items and get deliveries? Yes. By the way, Amazon's delivering me toilet paper on Thursday. On Thursday. You know what I paid for? It? Normal price. You know how soon it's going to be here? Like four days. Big deal. Did I go to Walmart? No. Just go online. Find it. It's right there. Um... Can I go to the hospital? Can I carry out a court-ordered visit with my kids? Yes. What if I have to go to work? Go to work. Um, where can I report a business operating in violation of the order? It pretty much says, shut up and don't be a tattletale because snitches get stitches. Are gun stores allowed to operate? Gun stores implementing social distancing requirements for employees and customers may remain open. Are golf courses allowed to stay open? Golf courses... They that are implementing social distance it may stay open. What's the current people that uh, the number of people that can get that, that can meet underneath the mass gathering requirements? Ten. Um, I, I mean, that's that's it. I mean, oh my God, have we covered all this stuff? It's, I've been talking for twenty five minutes. I hope that four of you are still here. You, 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 you're waiting for something stupid to happen, right? Like, do I need to? I need to have like a commercial break every fifteen minutes, or like put on my get mask and talk to you. You know, and if you know me, it should be no, no surprise. I actually all all in a gas mask. I, I'm I'm that guy. Okay, so now I'm going to cover some things that are not necessarily related to that. Well, they they kind of are, but my thoughts to you. 25 minutes in this thing. I covered hotels. Um, if you have, if you want to stay abreast of what's going on, you can text COVID N C C O V I D N C one word to eight nine eight two one one. Okay, um, that's local here in Stanley County. I'm sorry, that's in the state. Um, that is a North Carolina number to let North Carolina people hear from the Department of Health and Human Services what's going on by text. If you're in Stanley County and you want to know what's going on, or you have a question, 
Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, you can call 704-986-7483. Or you, and a, a, a nurse from our health department will answer the phone. You can email, one word, COVIDHELP, C-O-V-I-D-H-E-L-P, at stanleycountync.gov. That's a specific email address that we have set up just to answer questions, and you will be your, your, your question will be answered by a health professional. Um, let me think. Uh, we covered uh, if a county and state policy differ, the stronger policy applies. Um, you do not need paperwork to stay open. You do not need to give your employees paperwork to drive anywhere. You do not need some kind of letter in your car to drive throughout the state. This is not the Gestapo. Um, they're not going to be police doing traffic stops in the middle of the road going, show me your papers. It's not going to happen, okay? Stop telling people that. You're wrong. And if you're an idiot spreading that, I'd like to meet you and smack the shit out of you because you're wasting people's time, okay? And you're freaking pe people out. Um, people want demographics. Um, let me give you the demographics we have right now. Let, let me find where I put them because I just had them and... Um, I forgot where I put them. <laughs> Where'd they go? There they are. So we are in day 18 of the North Carolina Emergency Operations Plan. We currently have 51 counties out of uh, that have, have, have activated their EOCs, um, so about half the state. We have 763 cases across 60 counties. So our, our state is 60% um, saturated, uh, or 60% or, or of our state has at least one case or more. Um, hospital beds. Our I, I, ICUs across the state have a total of 3,223 beds available. 724 are currently filled right now. So our ICUs are currently at, um, we are at 23% of capacity. So we have 77% open. That, that's good to go. Um, we have 18,256 hospital beds for inpatient people across the state. Currently 7,184 of them are filled. So we're running about 40% capacity. Uh, that means a total, a total amount of beds of 21,479 of those beds. So we can put 21,500 people, okay? If 21,500 people in this state get sick, we can put them in a hospital bed and care for them, okay? Currently, 8,000 of those, 7,908, are, are filled. So we're running about 37% statewide capacity right now, and there's no problem. There's no big cases right now. There's not a mass... A mass amount of cases yet so we're already at about what did I just say 37% um, which is great our, our hospitals are doing great our first responders are doing great those are good numbers but just so you know that's about all the demographics you're gonna get there's a few of you out, out there going well I want to know what street he lives on tough well I want to know uh, racial demographics none of your freaking business um, I want to know uh, how you know uh, but what town is that person that got sick in my neighborhood in, or what streets he live on, or where does he work? That's none of your business because HIPAA. Okay, we're not going to tell you that. It's not. I don't care how much you bitch and moan. You're not going to tell you now. If they choose to tell you themselves, that's fine. Hospital will not tell you. Police department's not going to tell you. EMS won't tell you. Your friend won't tell you. Law enforcement won't tell you. The health department's not going to tell you. So we're not going to tell you. It's never going to happen. And the governor sure as shit not going to tell you. All right. It's not your business. I don't know why you think it is. And besides, in a week, it's not going to freaking matter. Because right now, we are already beyond containment. We are at what's called community spread. This disease is already hitting people, or viruses are, are already hitting people that cannot figure out how they got it. That means they haven't traveled somewhere. They, haven't, they don't know they've run across someone that had it, but all of a sudden, they're falling sick. That's a sign that containment has failed, and we're definitely into mitigation. And as that happens, the spread, will, the spread frequency will increase faster. You're seeing most places double every three days. That's probably going to be about the case for a while now. It's going to keep go, go, going up. If you get six cases now, in three days you'll probably have 12. In three days you'll probably have 24. In three days you'll probably have 48. And it's going to keep do, doing that for a while. On average, every place is going to differ some. So it really doesn't matter where the guy lives or how old he is or what his race is or if it's a he or she. Because within about a week, you're all going to have been exposed to it at some point in time or another anyway if you're out and about. If you keep your ass at home, it won't be a problem, all right? So your, my, your out, of, out, of, out of curiosity has no place here. Um, let me think. Um, essential businesses, we covered that, the age, gender map. By the way, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has demographic information on the, the, the COVID page. Um, so you can see hospital beds, age, um, you know, demographics, but that's all you're gonna get. 
you're not going to get personal private details. Uh, it's not your business to have it, and it's actually a law that says you can't have it. Um, a lot of a, a lot of press are asking, like, well, who's going to enforce this, and how are they going to enforce it, and what are you going to do about jails, and what are you going to do about this? We, we, we deserve to know. No, the hell you don't. You have no... The, Police are not required to tell you how they plan to address this. They're not. They're not going to. All right. I know because I sat in the room today with the police, the police, the police chiefs. I've heard their plans. Their plans make sense. But you, you know what they're not going to do? They're not going to come out and be like, "Well, here's who we're going to arrest, and here's who we're not going to arrest." Because then it just tells people what crimes they can commit, and that would just be stupid. And we don't do that. All right. Police chiefs tend to be a pretty smart bunch of folks overall. I, I can't believe I, I said that because as a kid, I'd have been like, oh, my God, I hate the cops. But that's just because I got a lot of speeding tickets. Now, I'm a responsible adult, and that didn't happen to me. So, um, yeah, cops are not going to tell you what they're doing. Uh, here's what I'm going to tell you, and, 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 and pay attention to this because this is no bullshit, all right? Um, police resources are already strained, okay? We can't hire more cops right now nobody can because there's no school just kicking you know it's not like amazon where you're like i need 50 more popo and they just show up in two days pre-trained ready to go with a shiny new badge and a gun doesn't ha happen like that it takes a long time to get them it takes a long time to train them and a lot of money to buy them so the police don't have more cops police have no ppe they have our our government right now is doing stupid stuff Personally, I think it's a mistake the way it's being handled, but let, but, but let me back up and explain to you how it's being handled. We finally activated the strategic national stockpile, the big pile of stuff that the U.S. government has that we've all been paying for for years, That's uh, this giant stockpile of sanitizer and gloves and gowns and masks and all the things it takes to care for people during a big, huge disaster. We finally activated that on a national level. What everybody thought was going to happen was, hey, every state's going to get some, and we're going to just trickle trick down, and that was going to be what, what happened, because that sounds fair, right? I said that was bullshit three weeks ago, and never, it's proven to be BS now. It's not going to happen that way. What's happened is FEMA has been get, have been in charge of directing that, and where do you think it's all going? California, New York, and Louisiana. We're getting nothing. North Carolina ain't getting squat, all right? Nothing. We've ordered over 59,000 pieces of equipment for our, our county. We've got zero. Trucks ain't here yet, y'all. Are, are, are they going to show up? They keep saying so. Personally, I think no. And for the most part, I'm usually right. All right? I'm just going to say that. I'm arrogant, but I'm also normally right. Um, I, I called this one a month ago. I thought it was a bad idea to depend on it. But they don't even have a choice. County personnel don't have a choice. State personnel don't have a choice. People have gone out and bought every damn thing up they can get their hands on, and there's nowhere for these companies to buy from. Um, there, there, there's nowhere for police and EMS and firefighters to get gear. So their resources are already strained. We've already got people doing things like scoping out delivery vehicles, going, hey, when do you think that food truck comes? I mean, cops are watching it and they're seeing it now, and they're going, Okay, now we gotta start watching food deliveries. Now we gotta start watching these stores because people are gonna start trying to loot stores because they're closed. Dollar General is always open at. I'll say Joe's Joe's family store is always open on Mondays from six to six p.m. So cops never have to worry about keeping an eye on it. Well, now they do because it's for some reason it's not open because of the closures. So now cops have to watch that too. Their resources are stretched thin. They don't have time to be writing tickets for stupid shit. All right? They don't have the resources to be writing tickets for stupid shit. And we're not getting the supplies that they need to do their job. So call to action from me to you. If you've got supplies that you don't need and you're planning on keeping your smart ass at home, take them somewhere. Take them to the local PD. Take them to your fire department. Take them to your EMS. Or call your fire department or, or EMS and go, hey, I got this. Would you all like to come get it? Because they would like to come get it. If you run a grocery store, maybe you want to consider prioritizing that box of germ kill or handy wipes for the local 911 folks. Call them and tell them it, it's there. They'll pay for it, but they need it more than the people at home. Is that going to piss some people off? Maybe. I really don't care. Because quite frankly, our EMTs and people need it. You don't. Okay? You know what you need to do? You need to stay the hell home. Cops don't have that choice. They have to go out. Firefighters need, and, 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 and ambulance personnel have to go out. And they have to go out while their kids and wife are at home, and they have very limited PPE. And there's a cop, they have no PPE. And they get to go out and serve the community and deal with drug head infected people that might or might not have this, and they have no way to go home 
and, and or they have no way to safeguard their family from it because they have no personal protective equipment because people like us are hoarding it, and that's shitty, and we shouldn't be doing that. So if you got it, give it up. Um, and if you don't got it, quit trying to buy it because the state can't get any. any. All right, I'm 35 minutes in this video. There's a good chance you've tuned out by now, but in case you haven't, I don't even know what to say next. Um, I'm going to take questions in the form of comments below uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm serious, guys. Here, here's the thing. Stop spreading stupid rumors. And I mean this with all my heart. If I find you on Facebook spreading stupid shit, I will call you down like an the idiot you are because we don't have time for that crap. All right? People like, I heard we're having a curfew. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're my friend works at so-and-so. No, your friend doesn't. You copied that shit from some other's fa somebody's Facebook post from, like, Louisiana three days ago. No, okay? Or we don't. If we have a curfew, you'll hear it from us. If a township has a curfew, you'll hear it from that township. So if you live in Albemarle, and, and, and I'll just use our, our towns, and that's inside Stanley County, I suggest you follow the city of Albemarle government, Stanley County government, and the health department. Those are the three sources that they'll tell you if you have a curfew or if you got to stay at home or if you got a case of the cooties or whatever it is, they'll let you know. Don't rely on stupid ass people on Facebook to know what the hell they're, they're, ta they're talking about. I hope you can fact check all my stuff. Um, you should be able to in the links that I, I'll provide to go along with this. But that's all I got to say. I've talked too long. It's been 36 minutes and it's Friday night. I want to go have some burgers and a drink because God knows I need one after this week. Thank you all in Stanley County government and in North Carolina government for what you're doing. Thank you all in law enforcement for continuing to hold the thin blue line even when you're, you're not getting the support that you need. If I had it, if it was up, if it was up to me, I'd get it for you. If I know a way, I will, but I don't know a way. I don't have the authority. Um, thank you in EMS and fire. Thank you all out there that are working to just tell, uh, uh, allow the rest of us to keep working. Thank you very much. And if you can stay home, stay at home. This is Tommy. You like my math? I'm out! I'm out! Bye.